Hi, welcome to Worship for People. My name is Pastor Rebecca Stevens Walter, and I'm so excited that you have decided to take just a few moments to be in this worship service, to explore your relationship with God, to understand the God in you, and to be with others who are also doing that spiritual journey. Worship for People is part of For People Media Ministries. If you are new here, I invite you to go back and look at some of our other worship services and also to check out our social media platforms. But right now, we're going to worship. We're going to worship together. We're going to be in this digital space, in this very real space. Praising God, praying, singing, and understanding what is at the heart of the gospel. This is a Lenten worship service. And so it is a time to get down in it, to maybe quiet your mind, quiet your surroundings. And so to do that, let's just take a minute to check in with our bodies. You can put your hand on your chest. You can do some sensory things, tapping, scratching, whatever makes you feel settled and what makes you feel close to God. If you need to check, your surroundings. Let your consciousness know that you're in a good place. And this is a safe place for you. Okay, friends, let's pray. Welcome. Welcome to Worship for People. Friends, let's open this worship service with a prayer. This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, thank you for bringing me, us, we, To this worship space. May my heart be full and filled. May I sing for joy and lament. And may I hear God even as a still small voice. I pray in Jesus' name. We all pray in many names. Amen.
wonders to the dead. Do spirits lift their resting heads to praise you? Engulfed by misery, my closest friend. Hi friends. It's Lent and we are wandering in the wilderness. So I wanted to share with you about one of our ancestors. Hagar. She spent a lot of time in the wilderness and so many things in her life were difficult and absolutely horrible. I don't want to pretend that they weren't. So our ancestor Hagar, she was an Egyptian. She was actually Sarah's slave. Sarah and Abraham didn't have any children. So Sarah sent Abraham to Hagar to have a child. Once Hagar conceived, things got pretty tense between Hagar and Sarah. Sarah, then Sarai, was absolutely horrible to Hagar. Harsh and mean And things got so bad that Hagar ran off into the wilderness, into the desert. The Lord came to Hagar while she was in the wilderness, telling her, Hagar, you will have a son. You will name him Ishmael and he will be great. In that conversation with the Lord, Hagar gave God a name, El Roy. Hagar saw God, Hagar named God. And despite the awesome raw power of God, and coming face to face with God, Hagar remained alive. Because you have to remember in the Old Testament, God is like a nuclear power. So coming face to face to God is deadly. But Hagar didn't get hurt. Hagar is the only person in the Bible to give God a new name. That is all pretty incredible, right? After her interaction with the Lord, Hagar returned to Abraham and Sarah, and Hagar gave birth to Ishmael. Sometime later, Sarah had a son named Isaac. but having her own son was not enough for Sarah. And she became jealous of Hagar and Ishmael. Sarah went to Abraham and demanded that Abraham send Hagar and Ishmael away. To his credit, that really upset Abraham, but he did it anyway. He sent Hagar and Ishmael away with some food and a skin of water. Hagar took Ishmael and ended up in the desert of Beersheba. 
When the water in the skin was gone, Hagar placed Ishmael under a bush and she went a little ways away because she could not watch him die. Then Hagar understandably began to cry uncontrollably. She sobbed. God heard Ishmael crying and an angel appeared to Hagar. God has heard the boy crying. Lift Ishmael up and take him by the hand. Then God revealed a well of water to Hagar. So she went and filled the skin so that she could give Ishmael a drink. God was with Ishmael as he grew up in the desert. Thank you so much, Becca, for reading scripture, not really reading, for telling us that story. It's such an important Bible story, and we don't hear it a lot. I heard about it a lot when I was in seminary. Sisters in the Wilderness uh, is a book written by Dolores Williams, and Dolores Williams was a protege of my, uh, one of my seminary professors, Dr. James Cohn. And Sisters in the Wilderness is largely credited as sort of the, the text that birthed womanism. And womanism is the study of um, Black women and theology and liberation. I encourage you to go um, Google those terms, Black women's liberation, Black li women liberation theology, womanism, James Cone, Dolores Williams, Sisters in the Wilderness. Uh, I, I encourage you to do um, some some digging on on those terms and those names. They are very important to our story today, and and I'm going to share a little bit about that. And I want to share a little bit about what the story means to me and why I think it's such an important story in our current um, world, where there's just a lot going on. including my upstairs neighbors. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear them. Hagar is an enslaved woman and she's being abused beyond being enslaved. I can only imagine what would cause a person to be so abused in an enslaved context that they would light out into the wilderness. Now, the wilderness for a lot of white people is this place that's beautiful and restful and spirit filled and nature, you're close to nature. And, and a lot, I hear a lot of people say, I'm really close to God when I'm in the wilderness or when I'm in the woods or when I'm in nature. But in this context, the wilderness is not a safe place. It's not a place that's godly, or at least that's not what Hagar is doing there. At least that's not what the text tells us. The text tells us that Hagar goes into the, into the wilderness. She leaves this overtly abusive context of being enslaved and of being abused beyond being enslaved by a jealous owner. And so she leaves. And later on, the story tells us that she takes her child, Ishmael, into the wilderness and leaves him underneath a tree, presumptively to die. And as Becca stated so poignantly, the God of the Hebrew text is nuclear. And so this isn't 
to be expected to be a story where God would come down and save Ishmael or save Hagar. And yet, Hagar names God. I imagine that Hagar may have thought, maybe if I name it, it will mean something. And it will know that it means something to me. Hagar names God. And sure enough, God comes down or around and gives Hagar the tools that she needs to take care of her baby. I've been looking around a lot lately and naming the things in my life that I need to do something. Things that I need to happen, to shift, to move forward. I've been naming those things. We're trying to move and it's quite a frustrating process. Not because our neighbors are noisy, but we've been trying to move to a new apartment and it's been really hard. It's been a long, long, long process. It's being held up by things outside of my control. And so I had to name that. I had to just say it out loud. This move is arduous. And I've been doing that with several things in my life. So I've, want to pass that to you, you know, what is that thing? As we're talking about Lent, we're talking about this time where we sort of go deep into the crevasse of what is illing us, what is holding us back, what is keeping us from being able to acquire or um, access the resources that we need to thrive. If Lent is a time that we do the work we need to do to prepare for the ministry of our lives, what is that thing that's happening for you or not happening for you that needs to be named, it needs to be said out loud so that there can be voice to it, so that there is a narrative, a realness. It's real. That problem is real. That noise is real. That goal is real. What is that thing that needs to be said out loud So that you can go forward and do the work of God and the teachings of Jesus with full earnesty and genuine care and love for your neighbor and for yourself. So with the noise from the neighbors and the story of Hagar, Name that thing. Name it. And then ask for it to move forward in time.
Friends, Worship for People is part of a larger organization called For People Media Ministries. For People Media Ministries is a nonprofit organization. It is a digital community that creates progressive Christian video content for a wide and diverse audience. Because For People Media Ministries is a nonprofit, the organization is funded by grants and the generosity of the community. And that's you. This worship service is a part of a larger spirit-filled and spirit-led project that I believe is going to change the way progressive Christianity is shared throughout the world. It's true, this ministry context has an international, even universal reach and appeal. So I appeal to you that you think about what it means to have a ministry like this. Imagine who could be moved just a little bit closer to liberation, could be nudged just a little bit closer to justice, could be shifted just a little bit toward a close, deep, meaningful, free relationship with Jesus Christ. I invite you to Put that value into your support of this organization. And so there is a link where you can, um, it's right here. This cute, actually, I think it's, maybe it's down here. It's somewhere on the screen. Um, a QR code um, where you can go to um, make a tax deductible a pledge, you can also go to fourpeople.media and there will be a link there to make your tax deductible pledge. The dollars that come to Four People Media Ministries go directly into making this content. And so we, I hope that there is enough value in that um, for you to go ahead and put your dollars toward this ministry. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your belief in this ministry. I really believe that it is a miracle. I'm just a poor Traveling through this world of woe, there's no sick, no toil or danger in this wide world in which I go. Souls.
souls redeem their vigil keep I'm going Friends, let us pray. This is a prayer that I invite you to listen and find yourself in a prayerful manner that feels close to God for you. God, thank you for this bounty. Thank you for the generosity of Christians and seekers and folks who just need a little place to feel like there is something good in the world. God, may our resources and the fruits of our labor, may they go toward your glory and may that glory be liberation. May that glory be freedom. May that glory be justice. May that glory be peace. God, may everything that we have and everything that we are drive us toward all of those things together. As, as people of God and people of each other. I pray in Jesus' name, and we all pray in many names. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining Worship for People. I know that Lent can be a time that feels heavy. And that's okay. That's okay. Those heavy times are important. But if you're feeling like you need some support, some prayers, 
just someone to hear your story, please reach out to me. I am your pastor. You can email me at Rebecca at four people.media. You can also follow us on any of our social media uh, platforms. We're on Instagram and TikTok primarily. Um, and you can message us there. You can message me. There's no us. It's me. I'm the pastor. <laughs> um, so I invite you to do that. Um, reach out. If you would like to join the worship team, reach out. Lindsay and Becca are amazing. And we always want to expand this team to, uh, to do as much as we can in worship. And if you want to submit a content idea for, um, for, for people, uh, please reach out to me and I can get you that information on how to submit ideas. If you have a, a grand idea for creating content for four people. With that said, it's Lent. a time of reflection, maybe a time of journeying, maybe it's just a time of waiting out the hard stuff until you know there will be relief. But as you go, as you go into the Lenten world, as you go into the war-torn world, as you go into the world that is full of injustice and oppression, know that God is with you. Know that you are of God's image, and so God is in you. And all around you, God encircles a life that God knows you deserve. Go for that and go in peace. Amen.
trying to get hold. 